Hi, in this video I'll be taking a look at the mask from curvature node. The mask from curvature node was originally introduced inside of my extension pack 3, but has gotten a significant rewrite in my extension pack 5. The mask from curvature node is a node graph only node, meaning it is not available in the layer stack. In the node graph you can find it under the node section, layer, extension pack, and the mask from curvature node is available right there. The mask from curvature node is a significant part of the new mask shell system. Let's take a quick look at that part. I'm going to go to the masks, mask shelf, and create one of these smart masks. I will be covering more in depth this part later on. I'm going to import this dialog. Again, I will cover this in a minute and take a look inside of this smart mask node. So I'm going to select the node and control double click, and I'll end up into in the subgraph of the smart mask. It's going to go to the curvature section and in here you have your mask and curvature node. So all the settings I'll be covering in this video, you'll also find inside of your smart masks if you go to the subgraph. So this will allow you to further tweak your smart masks to your liking. But for now, let's just stick to the node itself. The mask and curvature node has a variety of port inputs that need to be mapped in order for the node to work correctly. As the name implies, you require a curvature map for it to work. So in my channels list, I have a curvature channel here and I set it to linear and scalar. This is important so that your midpoint of 0.5 on your baked map is actually interpreted as 0.5 and not gets like an sRGB lookup or something. So whenever you import a curvature map that was baked, for example, in substance, mighty bake, X normal, etc., make sure you import it as linear. You can also create this curvature via the motor render palette, the bake tab, and in here we have a curvature high pass. So this comes with Mario extension pack 5, so you can bake your maps there if you do not have access to any other bakers. So now we need to have all these other ports mapped. With Mario extension pack 5, this is now fully automated. So if I select the mask and curvature node, right mouse click, go to the mask section, and choose the smart mask setup tool, the smart mask setup tool will recognize these inputs and will automatically create them for me. So all I need to do here is supply it my base curvature. So I'm just going to select my curvature channel and leave everything else as is. Let's hit process at Mari create these different inputs. After the smart mask setup tool has finished processing, you will see that the mask and curvature node has all its input mapped except these jitter fine and jitter cores, which I'll cover in a second. The Smart Mask Setup tool created a variety of different channels for me. So you can see in my channel list, I have curvature big, curvature fine, etc. And all of these channels are placed inside of this GeoBakes backdrop and then linked via radio nodes to the mask and curvature node. If I view a single channel, you can see all these different channels are differently blurred versions of the original curvature map. The purpose of the mask and curvature node is to blend all these different blurred curvatures together and process them. Let's open the node properties and in the main tab we will see the curvature influence group. In here we have different sliders to control the blending of the different curvatures. So let's view the mask and curvature by pressing 1 and if I increase for example the sharp I will have 100% of my original curvature. If I use the fine you can see the edges get wider And I can add more and more percentages of the other curvatures in there. The mode provides different processing presets. In raw mode, we will overlay all curvatures with a non-compressing blend mode. In edges, the edges are favored, cavities, the cavities are favored, and in dual mode, both the edges and the cavities are calculated and then blended together. In the edge cavity section, you can separately control the cavity and edge intensity. So by default, the node will split the cavities and edges into two separate passes and then blend them together again to create the final output. By changing the cavity intensity, you can bias this processing more towards one or the other. Finally, in the adjustment settings, we have some basic grade options such as contrasting, a bias, a gain, 
and you can invert the final result. Let's reset all these options to their defaults. And head over to the Advanced Options tab. The Advanced Options tab allows you to modify the processing of the curvature maps. First off, we have the curvature midpoint. As stated in the beginning of this tutorial, usually your midpoint should be at 0.5 of the map. So when you import a curvature map, you have both convex and concave areas and they all revolve around a midpoint of 0.5. So you have white, and black, and the default neutral value is gray, 0.5. By using the offset midpoint, you can change the assumed midpoint for the mask and curvature node. So for example, if I set it to 0.1, the processing is going to revolve around a 0.6 value. So using the default 0.5 value that's always assumed and then adding the offset midpoint. The curvature blending section houses the used blend modes to combine each of these curvatures on top of each other. So for example, if I put in a medium at 100% and put a big one on top and change the blend big from add sub to, for example, subtract, now, instead of using add sub to combine the big one with the medium one, I'm subtracting the big one from the medium one. By default, these are set to add sub, meaning values below 0.5 are subtracted and values above 0.5 are added. Next up, we have the input remap section. The input remap section provides curves to remap each of these curvature inputs. So the standard curvature is not remapped at all, so it's used as is. And then progressively, for each input, we have a slight contrasting going on. So you can see the curve changes more and more for each input. However, the 0.5 input, uh, sorry, the 0.5 default midpoint is always maintained. So it's just the black and the white areas that are crunched together. So this way you can control your curvature further and um, for example, push out some more areas if you need them in the mask. So let's go to, for example, to the big one. And if I start contrasting the darker areas, you can see I'm getting a, a very different effect. The next group under the advanced options is the blending group. The blending group houses a variety of controls to skew the processing in these different modes set under the curvature influence. So the first one is the raw mode curvature blending. If the mode is set to raw, the curvature blend modes in the curvature blending groups are no longer used and instead only the raw mode curvature blending mode is used. So if I set this to add sub, I have this result. If I set this to vivid light, I get a slightly different result. So again, the raw mode Curvature blending is one blend mode to control all blending of different curvatures when in raw mode. Next up, we have the three edge mode controls. So if I'm in edges mode, and we set the raw mode just for good measure, now we have activated the edge mode controls. So the first one is the cavity blending. As discussed, the node splits the cavities and the edges in two separate passes and then recombines them to create the final output. The edge mode cavity blending determines what blend mode is used to recombine the cavity pass with the edges pass. So in this case, it makes sense to use multiply because usually the cavities will be darker. But you can also obviously change this to your liking. So for example, you could use vivid light as well here and we would have a very different result. The edge mode cavity opacity determines the opacity used to blend the cavity with the edges, again using the blend mode we talked about before. And if I change the opacity, you can see I'm lowering the opacity of the cavities. Finally, we have the edge mode value addition. As the name implies, this just adds a value to the final processing.
the cavity mode value addition is the same thing, but only works within the cavities mode. So if I go to the cavities mode, you can see I'm adding or subtracting a value. Finally, we have the dual mode options. If I switch this to dual mode, I'm using both the edges and cavities process modes, and then recombining them all together. The dual mode cavity blending just determines what blend mode is used to combine the edges processing paths and the cavities paths together. So in this case, it's screen. If I set this to normal, I would only have the cavity pass. I can also try some different ones. So this looks fairly similar to what we usually have. And anyway, these are just some added controls to combine these things together in dual mode. The cavity opacity here determines the opacity used of combining the cavities pass with the edges pass. The last section of the advanced options covers jittering. Jittering allows you to offset your curvature maps with any input defined in the node graph. So when we first set up the mask and curvature, I was talking about these jitter fine and jitter coarse inputs that are not mapped by default. I will create a cloud node, so just a simple procedural cloud, and attach this to the jitter fine. If I view my curvature again, the result is already a lot fainter. So disconnect the jitter fine again, I'm getting the original result, and if I reconnect it to fine, the cloud node is used to offset the sharp, fine, soft, and medium. Using these dropdowns, you can define which channels or which inputs also to pull to offset these curvature maps. So by default, the sharp, fine, soft, and medium are affected by jitter fine, and big, large, and huge are affected by jitter coarse, which in this case is not mapped. So let me create an FBM node. And I'm gonna increase the huge. And you will see now the huge curvature is affected by this FBM node. There are a variety of different options to finally control the processing, but I'm not gonna cover all these different settings too much in detail because they're all outlined exactly what they're doing in the online help. So if you go to the mask and curvature node, you will find a large section on jittering exactly explaining the math and the processing what is happening internally. But let me just show you an example. I'm going to use the soft one and change, for example, to inverse attenuated. You can see it gets a lot more contrasty in this case. So you have very detailed control over what is happening inside of the node processing. Lastly, we just have the jitter overrides. So these are global overrides for all these settings. So you can say, for example, okay, let's use whatever is connected to the jitter fine input for all the different curvatures. So if we use jitter fine for everything, even the huge, large, big, etc., are all controlled by this cloud node in this case. You can also do the same for jitter cores, and now everything is controlled by the FBM node. This covers the mask and curvature node. Like I said, it is mostly used inside of the smart mask. So ideally, if you only stick to the smart mask, you will not have to interact with this node as much, but it's nice to know a little bit of the details of what is happening inside if you want to further tweak things to your liking.